a very special time. We're all just sharing and talking and praying, and all of a sudden, like I was ten o'clock, like, go, go, go. Time flies when you're having fun with the Lord. And then I know Mike went Saturday, uh, Mike and James went Saturday to Ankeny to the prayer burn there. Some of the, uh, the rest of us weren't able to join, but it's been a long weekend of prayer and praise and worship. And um, one of the words that came forth, I think, was Cindy Jacobs that shared that there's a special blessing, uh, the, the, the trials and tribulations that, that the church and that the, the, his people are going through, uh, the storm, she talked about a shifting. Um, if Elijah didn't go through the trials and if he hadn't made it through, he wouldn't have got Elijah. Right. And that there's a mantle that's been placed in our lives, we've just got to pick it up. Because now is the season of Elisha. Mm -hmm. Elijah is behind and Elisha is before. And so the double portion, I just want to play a, pray a blessing of the double portion on all of us. That um, our purposes and our callings are made known. And that hope is restored in the church in Jesus' name. Amen. And I know that there's a lot going on, so let's just begin. Praise and prayer requests. Anybody want to share anything this morning? Yeah. I'd like to uh, praise the Lord for our latest granddaughter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Miraculous things she had developed before, was wrapped around her twice, it was one. or once. Two knots. Two knots, but you all learned that. <laughs> but anyway, it was from beginning to end, this was a miraculous thing. Mm -hmm. God is good, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. so thank God for that. And then uh, I want us to pray for Tim and Leah. They're on their way back down to Columbia, uh, Missouri, for his sister's funeral. Pray for the entire family of God's peace, also for their safety going on. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah James. I had a, I had a school friend moving out of his apartment, but something really weird happened in uh, in his North Tower apartments. Uh, this lady, Dolores Delaney, who gave me their, it was like 81, and they found her dead four days ago. And I, took a little time last night talking to Alan. I said, uh, that's got to be hard on <laughs> you find for God. And I, I asked him, I said, man, I'm, I'm here for you. And I said, I hope that, you know, that she was a good lady. And I know that you thought a lot of her. I know that she greeted me a lot of times when Alan made to come in the door. And she was 81. And I, I think she knew the Lord, and I could tell but she was so distraught, I don't know if she had leisure or, or uh, you know, all this <coughs> different, uh, you know, these different diseases where you forget stuff. And you may not have forgotten where she was, and it got in a spell, and she probably had a heart attack. And I, I don't really know that that lady, I love her and now, and I said, wait a so we had a little soft sandwich and chili, and I said, man, like, I know you're going to a different place in the shelter. I, I know that your lease is up, and I spent a little time with him. I mean, I can get my drum lesson Monday, and I may not see him. Sunday, I probably might not see him. Talk to him, but it's like, but the family of Dolores gave me, I just ask that you lift them up, and that's a big loss on somebody four days in a nursing home, they didn't know it was there, and I'm glad that they got her out of there, and they said that their relatives came over, and they were out on the night lady she was, and they were just hoping that uh, God be with the family or that one year old lady that uh, can break through some changes there that they need to see in that that house in the place. You know, so that I was thankful that my arm is a little bit stronger in the prayer. And um, I'm sorry that you were, I know that you were missed in that midst. Uh, the spirit was moving live and it was pretty powerful. And I had that prayer lady about synthetic and God and kind of broke through some chains. And we need to exercise unity and I don't know, I've been saying that at work togetherness, and it goes hand in hand. If we're, we have to be a little more, more united, and we really need to stand in the gap for a world of peace. Uh, thank you, guys. God bless. Thank you. Thank you.
John and I went to visit Mary Ann Mitchell yesterday. Just pray she's not going to get better. The Lord takes her home. It's a pretty sad situation. I got a text from Kim Oliver. Um, her mom's in the uh, Methodist ICU infection and oxygen and breathing trouble. They found an aneurysm attached to her aorta and wrapped around her collarbone. So let's just pray that God's will be done in that situation with Kim, <clears throat> her mother. Um, for my friend David that was here last week, his dad, 88, still not accepting the Lord, um, doesn't want to hear the gospel, and also that David would get uh, his re relationship with his kids reestablished. Yes. Um, years ago, his first wife took the, you know, had an affair, took the kids, left, and basically told the kids they weren't have to have any contact with David. So his daughter just reached out to him, I think it was earlier this summer, so the first time in 20, 30 some years he's seen his kids. Wow. And his boys still haven't reached out to him. But. We have a couple of things. Uh, we have a situation where our granddaughter and her husband, uh, his mother was not a good mother. So we heard. Uh, long story short, we had an opportunity last winter. Last winter that we were girl. Anyhow, demons were cast out of her. Okay? And what I'd like to pray for and help us is that the son, which would be our grandson by marriage, uh, that he can forgive his mother. And I told our granddaughter that Jane and I stopped and saw her party, I think. And she said, you know, he just hates her. And uh, you know, I told her, I said, hey, Mary Magdalene, Jesus cast seven devils out of her, and yet she ended up being one of the closest ones to him. Mm -hmm. So I said, Rachel, when the, the devil's gone, mm -hmm. then we have to, we, you know, I understand he's suspicious and doesn't, you know, he heard about that, but he doesn't understand. It. And she didn't know anything about it, and she hardly remembers that night. But uh, she is hungry for God. She, you know, sure going to that big church in West Des Moines, which I don't know anything about, but she's going to church. That she never did. Mm -hmm. But it warned the young children. She got that. As a young person, she opened the door with Ouija boards and, uh, and tarot cards. And when you open the door like that, yep. it came in. And then it controlled her life and ruined the whole family, you know, yep. which that's what the devil does. Yes, he does. Second thing, my brother has hemorrhaging in both eyes hmm. from diabetes. And he didn't know it was that bad. Uh, anyhow, they're they're treating it. They gave him a shot. He said the other day, right in the eyeball, reduce pressure. <clears throat> and uh, so we, I, you know, I told him, I said, hey, God's a healer. Yeah, he can heal it. That's right. You know, we just need to uh, spend his eyes together. So I'm asking you to pray for him too. Amen. 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 Uh, I'm sorry. You know, praise God for being so good, and thank you all for your prayers and concern for my family. Uh, they're okay, nothing happened, no, no major damage happened Amen. Uh, on the island. Uh, and then, you know, all this uh, division that was among the people there, it actually went away, and, and everybody's come together, helping each other, and mm -hmm. that. And, I'm praising the governor for the fantastic job that he did taking care of the situation. Uh, a lot of people are saying that in the entire history of the uh, established government there, that has been the best uh, emergency situation handling they have seen. So uh, that's, that's good. Uh, also, you know, God can make a good out of, out of bad. I don't know if you guys have seen, but there's been a bunch of videos uh, posted on 
on social media of people in Florida gathering at the beach, worshiping God and praising and praying. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen that before. Mm -hmm. So that's the big thing. Yeah. So let's just uh, continue to speak for God's moving into the people that uh, there's not a lot of damage in Florida. Now, apparently, there's uh, a hurricane warning just before Atlanta. Keep going that, that far, uh, but the hurricane is, is uh, losing strength. It's not a category four, mm -hmm. so it's not as strong as it was. It was uh, down in the, in the grievance, and also there's a big revelation movement in people because there's a lot of nasty people out there making all sorts of comments and 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 they're speaking things that. I'm not sure you guys can work, honestly, because uh, we've been seeing this for months and months now. Uh, people saying, well, that's what you get for going for such and such, or karma, and things like that, you know? So, uh, I pray that God illuminates these people's minds and, and that they understand that this is not a God thing that's happening. to rise up 
as the body of Christ, as one in the spirit of unity that James said, to speak the word. Peace be still. Peace be still. There, there, I, you know, I was, uh, there's an argument between believers that God comes, or is this judgment? Or, or, or does and, and Satan doesn't have authority to, you know, create storms? I'm like, he's the prince of the power of the air. Like, I, I'm not. We're missing the point. It's not arguing over who causes the storm. We're missing the point. Yes. The point is, he didn't come to steal and kill and destroy. There's only one who has come to steal, to kill, and destroy. Yes. And he is defeated. Yes. But he doesn't remain defeated unless the church reminds him yes. and stands in authority. Yes. And enforces. The law of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, the law Lord. of grace. Uh -huh. One yeah. drop of the blood of Jesus is more powerful than anything exactly. that uh -huh. legion of Satan and his imps can do. One yes. drop. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And he gave it all, church. He gave it all. Yes. He gave it all. Mm -hmm. And so I agree, there's a boldness. There's a boldness. There needs to be a line that's drawn. All of us need to come to that point of ourselves where we draw the line and we say, that's that's the old me, it's the longer I will live, but Christ lives in me, and I'm going to stand right here and cross the line. Jesus Christ says, peace be still to the storms. Yeah. Jesus Christ says, healing to the sick. Jesus Christ says, the dead will rise. Three days in the grave, Lazarus come forth. Yes. Amen. The world says, but he stinks. But Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Right. Unbind his, 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 his burial clothes. Unbind him. Church, we stink. It's time to rise up and be unbound. Come on. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yes. We're going to have to help each other get unbound. Yeah. I can't unbound my own great clothes. And we have to come from the mindset, yes, we do need unity, but if you're waiting for somebody to join with you? Stop it! If you are the only one that rises up, that is enough! I hope everyone's heart is stirred. I hope everyone has had enough. The enemy's days are numbered. But, but Jesus has not returned. He's not yet returned. And he's waiting. He's waiting for us. Yes. I hope y'all are ready. I hope y'all are ready. It's going to be an amazing service this morning. It's It's been brewing since before Friday night. It started in here Friday night, spread a little bit of anything, and brought it right back here. So um, let's stand and go to the Lord this morning and invite him to have his way. Jesus, have your way this morning, Lord. Have your way this morning, Lord. Stir up the hearts of your people, Lord. Stir up the boldness. To stand, Lord, that this storm must
life. You are not death. You are not destruction. You are life and hope and peace and joy. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings. We thank you for the healing. We thank you for the miracles, Lord. Those we've already seen and those we can only see in our mind's eye, Lord. But we know they shall come to pass. Because it is finished. It is finished. Bless the worship this morning. Bless the word this morning. Be with us in every way in this service. September 26th, Tom Stamen, uh, this we're <coughs> hosting this gathering, uh, this is a gathering, Tom, uh, there is a, a, an illness, I think, in the host place where he was supposed to go, and so he's just using our facility, but you guys are all welcome to come, um, worship team, people join, uh, we'll hopefully be joining. Yeah. Um, a couple other announcements that aren't up here, uh, Women's Conference, uh, Saturday, November 11th will be our next women's conference. There are postcard invitations in the back. There's full sheet uh, flyers if you have somewhere you want to post them, somewhere you want to announce, some people you want to invite. Gentlemen, grab one for a lady friend. Ladies, grab one for all your girlfriends. And uh, we look forward to an awesome time. Uh, and if, if you plan to come, talk to Sarah or myself and give us your t-shirt size. We're going to be ordering t-shirts and making t-shirts for the women's conference. So um, talk to one of us and give us your t-shirt size. Uh, and lastly, uh, Sunday school. We need additional volunteers for <coughs> Sunday school. Um, we uh, right now are down to one teacher for the youth and one teacher for the um, high school age children. So if we could get maybe <coughs> two or three volunteers, maybe do it once a month. Um, we talked about maybe doing a family Sunday where everybody stays up to give everybody a break at least once a, once a Sunday. But be in prayer about Sunday school. Uh, think about if you'd like to spend some time um, downstairs with the kids, you know, we'll make it as easy as we can for everybody that wants to help. In Jesus name. Amen. Yeah, I'd just like to add to that. Uh, if you're afraid that you just haven't taught before or you're not comfortable with that, look, we can provide curriculum, we can do whatever you need in order to do it. And you won't have to be, what we're trying to do is get enough people so that nobody has to be down just doing that week in and week out. So if we get enough people, then maybe once every six weeks you teach. And that's what we'd like to see, something like that. Uh, it's, you know, different times we've had certain individuals down to teach, and that's just all they do when they never get to be in a church service up here and be part of what's going on with the rest of us. So we obviously have a, uh, a real sense of responsibility to the young people. They need to be exposed to the to the presence of the Lord and the reality of God and uh, it isn't so much about doctrine at this point especially for the younger ones it's just let them be in the presence of the Lord let them know that there are adults who believe in this God so that as they grow up they'll believe that he is yeah. that's the first thing we got to have they got to believe because they're not getting this from anywhere else I mean out here in the world they're not getting any uh, affirmations about the Lord other than he's bad to do a bad stuff if he exists at all so we want to we want to have an impact on their lives and it takes all of us to do that so you know really prayerfully consider it and if you can even if it's you know I can only do it once every couple of months or something that's fine just just pitch in help out so that we don't have just one or two people carrying the load for everybody It'd be great the Lord will bless you and uh, you'll get smiles from a couple of other people that will not be down all the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And let's take an offering this morning. Um, John and Don, do you do anything with all this stuff? Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be here today, Lord. Honored to be in your house and in your presence. Lord, we just pray that you would move in the midst of your people. Lord, we're in troubled times. Every day there's a new thing. People have not seen the necessity to turn to you. The majority think that they can handle it, the government will handle it, somebody will handle it. But we know that things are going to wax worse and worse until people's hearts are prepared. 
a, a field has to be plowed and has to be taken care of before the seed can be planted. And Lord, we know that all these things that look so horrible are all part. You've allowed it to happen so that people will begin to question what they think and what they believe. And then you open the door and the opportunity for us to sow the seed. And we're so thankful for that. Now, Lord, we ask that you bless this offering, bless this service, give us a Holy Ghost service. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Where's your team?
Yes. You have that fire within you. Yes. And the Lord is waiting for you to open up and let that fire out. Okay? So he sent the fire. You've received the fire. And this world is crying out for something they don't understand. In a way they are saying, send the fire. And he's going to send his fire through you and you and you and you and you. And you and all of you. I don't care if you're young or if you're old or in between. The Lord wants to release his fire from you. The kingdom is within you. The river of yes. life and yes. water is within yes. you. Release the church. Release yes. the church. It's time. Yes. It's now. It's now because you're no longer slaves. Yes. Yes. You're no longer slaves. No longer slaves. That sounds like we did. Hallelujah.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's thank our Father right now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for making us children. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We have been included in the beloved, in the family of God. Hallelujah. We praise you this morning again for all that you're doing, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, Lord. We know that you're doing a mighty work right now. Yes. And we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Suzanne. Mike and the worship team. Thank all of you. I love that last song. Praise the Lord. It blesses me every time. Praise God. They all do, but that's just that for some reason that speaks to me. Praise God. Amen, amen. Praise God. All right, Sunday school young people can be dismissed. Uh, I'm breaking on stairs with the kids. Um, there was a, a tongue given Friday night. There wasn't an interpretation given. And I feel pretty strongly that the Lord says, I am the God who is a chain breaker. And I have created you in my image. And when you weep for your children, I grieve for mine. Mm. And that when you see your children in bondage, you go forth and set them free just as I would in Jesus' Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I would hope you really well consider uh, taking a chance at uh, teaching uh, the young people. And, uh, and again, like I said, you know. They won't, you won't have to do a whole lot of preparation, so it won't take a whole lot of time out of your work uh, week. But uh, a lot of times with the youngest ones especially, as I said, it's just more about introducing them to the reality of God. So you can have a little picture down there of Jesus knocking on the door or whatever. I mean, just anything to get them thinking about the fact that God is real, that He's involved in our lives, even no matter how young you are. And that adults actually believe it too, praise the Lord. So that's that's the first step of being given to believe that there's a God. And then there, it, it opens the door for any possibility that God would like to do in their life. So uh, the first thing is we have to make it clear to them that God is real. And it's important enough for us to participate in church services and pray and seek the Lord and so forth. So it would be a valuable thing for them as well, praise the Lord. So pray about it, and I hope you'll... Involved. And if you if you want to, if you can, you can speak to uh, Jamie or Suzanne or myself, and we'll see to it that we can get you on the list. Praise the Lord. And everybody wants to be on the list. Right? Mm. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That way we can call you about eight times a day for nothing. <laughs> just see if you're home. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, I want to give you a little spiritual advice here this morning before we get right into the Word of God. Thank you. Sometimes the simplest things work the best. Mm -hmm. and it's been my experience over the years that you should never do anything you would have wanted to explain to the paramedics. <laughs> <laughs> so, you might want to consider that. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 funnier than me when I thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody's got a bucket now, I was talking to my uncle at a funeral here just a week ago, and he was telling me, oh, there's one of the things on my bucket list, he's got a son that lives in Indianapolis, and he said, if you go to the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. and uh, I said, well, that's cool, you know, that'd be, be fun to do. I don't know if it's on my bucket list, but, you know, if it's important to you, then obviously that's a good reason for it. So I just thought I'd share one thing. <clears throat> my bucket list is uh, two drumsticks, Mashed potatoes with gravy and a biscuit. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, well, just in case this doesn't work out, I gotta have to. Keep your day job, Pastor. <laughs> so we see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
praise God. Y'all have been so supportive, I want to get right into the Word of God. Let's go, let's begin with Galatians chapter 5. And I want to read uh, verses 16 through 18. Uh, Galatians 5, 16 through 18. I appreciate all the testimonies and uh, prayer requests this morning, and they do speak to what I want to talk to you about, even though it may not seem like it right here at the beginning, but it really does, so I figure out where I'm going. So. But this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust is against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the Spirit... You're not under the law. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. All right, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession or our words that are in agreement with them. Amen? Now, I mentioned this there a week or two ago, and I'm just kind of, it's not the same message by any means, but I just want to share this again, get it clear in our minds. Our words, in and of themselves, they have no physical thing in them. Right? I mean, there's nothing tangible there other than just what comes out of our mouth. They don't have anything that can be seen or felt in and of themselves outside of the Word of God. Now, if you're speaking what the Word of God says, they have import. Sure. They have impact. They have... It's a force. It's not just idle words. It's not, it's not just uh, saying something. It's declaring a truth. All right, let's go now, if, uh, if you will, uh, Sheila, to Malachi chapter 3, and verse 17 and 18. Malachi 3, 17 and 18. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Everything works by words. Amen. And we need to <coughs> recognize that. There's a whole lot of things going on in the universe that we take for granted and just kind of let it slip right over our heads and without ever acknowledging the reality of what it is that all this thing is trying to show us. Praise the Lord. They shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth them. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Praise the Lord. Psalms 18, verses 28 through 32. Psalms 18, 28 through 32. Hallelujah, Jesus. For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. Praise the Lord. So, Amen. God sees us just like He sees Jesus. There's no distinction between us as far as God's concerned. We are the righteousness of God yes. in Him. Yes. Now, by definition, righteous means you've got some rights. Amen? Look at Romans chapter 5, verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned it by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Okay, so our identity, who we really are in Christ, it destroys the works of the devil in humanity that came through Adam. Do you get it? Our identity in Christ 
who we are in Christ, destroys the works of the devil and humanity that came through when we were in Adam. Yes. That were prevalent, that were uh, controlling and, and, and running the, our lives and, and the lives of those around us. Amen? So, our power is in our identity and in our words. Yes. Because, in, in fact, they're one and the same. That's how we, the government of God operates. You know, you, you look at the Old Testament, you read where the king's word goes out and it can't be changed. He's the king of kings. Whatever he has spoken, when we speak it, we're just simply declaring what he has already said and it cannot be changed. Amen. 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 That's how the government of God works. Right. It's how the kingdom of God operates. It's how the kingdom of heaven operates. They're one and the same. Sure. Now, if, for example, you can't apply the laws and the language of some foreign country here in the United States except at their embassy. That's right. Because wherever their embassy is, wherever their ambassadors are, is sanctified. San, uh, uh, I won't say sanctified, not sanctified, but but separate ground. It's, it's a part of their country in our country. Yes. Just likewise when we have an embassy in other nations, that's U.S. territory where that piece of property is. Yes. It's just like it's the United States. They speak English, they go by the same laws that we have here in the United States. All the stuff is just like that because that is U.S. property. Right. You are an ambassador for Christ. Amen. Wherever you are on this earth is an embassy for God. Yes. It's a connection for God's yes. law and God's government to rule and to reign. Yes. Amen. Amen. But you have to do it. I mean, you have to operate it. You have yes. to speak it. Amen. For it to become a reality. Amen. So, that's, that's the first thing that we're dealing with here this morning. Now, a lot of, I don't know, few years back, a couple years, three years, four years, whatever it was, I taught someone quantum physics. Not that I'm a physicist, I'm just saying I can read. Okay, so we talked about quarks and, uh -huh. and all the, you know, how they respond to human words. Yes. What you think they are is what they become. Praise the Lord. That's a fact. That's just scientific fact. It's, it's evidence, okay? So we have, uh, for example, let me just use this. The space time continuum. Now, what all that means is a continuum is just a thing whose parts can't be separated or separately discerned. Space and time in our way of living are one and the same. I mean, you have so much time, time elapses, right? right. And you can't actually see right. or discern either one. Right. But they're interconnected. They're, sure. they're, they're integrated. Yeah. Amen. Now, with that in mind, I want to show you how God works. Now, they, okay, so science has figured out through quantum physics that the further breakdown of the atom, which we know everything exists, mm -hmm. atoms are in everything. They're solids. They're they're mass. So, through physics, we've learned. Now, this isn't a revelation to God. It's just something we finally figured out. Right. 2,000 years of, you know, living and, and interacting with the world around us and people begin to discover things, okay? So this isn't a new thing to God. It's just new for us. All right, Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Matthew 3, 1 and 2. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. One of the main uh, definitions of repent is to change your mind. Right. Adjust your attitude. Amen. So it's saying repent. And the way you think about God, the way you have connected with God, because the kingdom of heaven is here. It's yeah. nearby. Amen. All right, verse 7. Still in chapter 1. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. John's still speaking. He's talking about uh, 
The kingdom is at hand. Repent, therefore, change your mind about God. He's baptizing people. All these Jews are coming out there and railing on him. Wanting to know, are you Elijah? Are you the Messiah? Are you the one to come? All these, all these questions, okay? All right, let's go to John now, chapter 1, verses 15 through 17. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Verse 29. The next day John sees Jesus coming unto them and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Okay? Praise the Lord. Alright. The kingdom of heaven was near. That's what John was preaching. Right. The king of the kingdom has arrived. Right. Praise the Lord. So heaven, by this definition and understanding, was about to invade earth. Sure. Praise the Lord. Remember, the, these people that were being spoken to, I just mentioned to you, in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, primarily are Jews. Now, there are some Gentiles there, but for the most part, Jesus is dealing with, with these uh, Jewish believers, amen, and just Jewish. And they're not all converts, because Jesus hasn't died yet. This is still old covenant. Sure. All right? Now, they know, by virtue of the fact that they're Jews, they know all the prophecies about the coming Messiah. They've, they've read him. It's been going on for 1,500 years, whatever. And so they know about the Messiah. They know about the coming of the kingdom. They even know that there's a new covenant to come. If they read the old covenant, they would know that it's pointing us to another covenant. Right. God saying it over and over. He says, and I, that day I'm going to put my word in your heart, and it'll no longer be this and that. It'll be the other thing. So he, he, he's explaining all that to them. But it didn't come in the way that they expected it to come. Right. Now, we can make the same mistake because Jesus is not coming to be a king. He is our king right now, ruling and reigning. Yes, he is. Praise the Lord. Amen. He's not going to be a king. He's not coming someday to be our king. He is our king, yes. and he's ruling and he's reigning right yes. this very minute. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. So I don't have to worry about who's in charge. Amen. If I understand, the kingdom has come, right? Yes. All right, look at John chapter 18. Verses 36 and 37. Now just stay with me because this gets, in my mind, it, it is an eye opener. It, it, this will make you realize how fantastic God is and how little we discern of what it is He's doing, which is why we're always asking Him to come and do something that He's already Amen. done. Amen. 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 Instead of taking our authority yes. and enforcing the kingdom of God's government here on earth. Yes. So Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would be then would my servants fight. That I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou our king then? And Jesus answered, You said I'm a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. So, John's message was more than, you know, change your mind about God, get saved, and then after 80 or 100 years, you'll, you'll die and go to heaven. That really wasn't the message he was preaching. Now, that's a part of it. I'm not saying that's not a reality. I'm just saying that wasn't the focus of John's ministry, nor was it the focus of Jesus' ministry. Jesus went about preaching the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. That's what he was preaching. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Now, again, I know it's true. I know heaven exists. I know I've got loved ones, family yeah. members, you know, that are there, that are, that are with the Lord. Yeah. But our concepts here, sure. again, are, are yeah. very limited mm -hmm. as humans. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we've had this, although that's true, we've had this mentality of future life. It's in the group, by and by. One of these days, it's really going to be good. Amen. When I die, it's going to be fantastic. You know, one of these days, things are 
no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more blah, 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 all of that, Sunday. So we always have this future kind of thinking, yes. and, it, and it permeates our entire existence. It gets to the point where we're, we're thinking that way about healing, we're thinking that way about deliverance, we're thinking that way about prosperity, yes. we're thinking that way about restored yeah. relations, we're thinking about that, about everything, it's always out there somewhere. Yeah. Is my answer, is my blessing, is my breakthrough, is my something or the other. Praise the Lord. Now, if if you redeem something, if you restore something, yes. it's going to be back to its original condition. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Amen. It's going back to whatever its original being was. That's what it'll be if it's restored or redeemed. Yes. Amen. Not kind of fixed up, not, you know, a, a weird kind of Kind of like that? No, exactly like it was. If it's redeemed, if it's restored, it has to be identical to what it was before it was unrestored, before it became disconnected. Yes. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right, now watch this in Genesis chapter 1, verses 6 and 8. Genesis 1, 6 through 8. See, God is showing us up right off the bat. And we've got this religious mindset. We've got this, and I'm telling you, it permeates Holy Ghost filled believers. Mm. You can yep. say amen or oh man or whatever, but I'm just saying. Okay. Just because we have the Holy Spirit doesn't mean we don't think religiously a lot of times. Right. Because yeah. yeah. we're not always following the Holy Spirit. We're trying to get the Holy Spirit to show up, and He's right here in us, mm -hmm. and we're doing all sorts of, you know, mm. gymnastics trying to make something happen. That's, that we just aren't taking responsibility. Yeah, exactly. We're just not doing what it is we're supposed yeah, to do. Exactly. So God said, let there be, this is creation, right? God spoke. And all of a sudden it is. It wasn't until he spoke it, or at least it wasn't in the visible mm -hmm. right. until he spoke it. And then it becomes manifest. Then it becomes max. It becomes time and space. It becomes a reality that you can see and experience in a natural way. But God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. God called the firmament heaven in the evening and the morning for the second day. Now, we've read that, and I have, I know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. But the waters over the firmament are the clouds. Right? It's basic science. You learned that in fifth grade or fourth grade. Then. So the waters over the firmament are clouds. The water under the firmament are oceans, seas, lakes, rivers. Right? Are you with me? You ready? We are, I'm standing and you're sitting here this morning in the firmament. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? By definition. By God's own definition. Yes. Wow. All right? Look at verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven. Wow. Oh. <laughs> and the evening and the morning were the second day. Wow. So originally, mm. heaven wasn't somewhere out in outer space. It wasn't. Mm. Light years it wasn't. away. It was between the above waters and the beneath waters. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Before the fall. Yes. They weren't separate. Heaven and earth were integrated. Wow. Praise the Lord. Just think about the scriptures. God's walking yes. with Adam. He's talking yes. with Adam. Uh -huh. All right, Matthew chapter six. Hmm. Verses 9 and 10. And I want, I, I'm, I'm doing, I'm not doing this just to be weird. I'm doing this because we need to take authority. We need to understand who we are and start doing stuff the way yes. we were created to do it. Yes. yes. Instead of continuously praying for another breakthrough or for God to show up and do something miraculous, yes. when God is waiting for us to do what only we can do, what He has empowered us to do. Yes. Mm. Yes. I didn't mean, I, Praise God. Wow. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and on earth as it is in heaven. 
Jesus is praying for a restoration. This is Jesus praying before the, the, the resurrection, before the death, burial, and resurrection. Uh -huh. He's in the old covenant. Yes. He's still under the fall. Mm. Amen? Yes. And here's his prayer. Restoration and redemption for a fallen creation, for a creation that has been separated from heaven. Yes. For a people that have been separated from God. Yes. Jesus came. His purpose wasn't just to usher us off into another dimension. He came to reconnect heaven and earth. Yes. Wow. Yes. The visible and the invisible. Yes. yes. Praise the Lord. If you have eyes to see, you'll see. If you have ears to hear, what's he yes. saying? I want you to get connected to the kingdom. Amen. You'll see things you can't, you couldn't see before. Yes. They're there. You just haven't been yes. able to see them because yes. you're not spiritually alive. You're not connected. Yes. Amen. To that original condition. Yes. You got to be restored. You got to be redeemed. You've got to be born again. Yes. 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 Praise the Lord. So, the visible, the invisible, the human, and the divine. And it was all in him. He was going to yes. reconnect all of this in himself. Yes. Somebody already said it this morning. The kingdom of God is in you. Yes. yes. Where you are, the kingdom is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. The kingdom of heaven is where you are. Yes, it is. Wherever you are. Because the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are synonymous terms. They're, yes. they're just many of saying the same thing, right? Alright, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 10. See, we're real supernatural and don't know it. We're wandering around here and, you know, acting like we're everybody else. Yeah. And we're nothing like everybody yeah. else. We are new creatures. Yes. Right. We're a whole different thing. Exactly. Yep. Something that hasn't been seen since before the foundation of the world. That's right. In the dispensation of the fullness of times, Jesus, He might gather together in one all things in Christ. What's God going to do? In the dispensation of the fullness of time, He might... Bring, now, that word fullness of time just means completion. When everything's brought to the point where this can happen. Fullness of times, He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven... And which are on earth. Even in Him. Yeah. 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 Praise the Lord. It's still true. I mean, yeah. originally, Adam had the best of both worlds. Yeah, he did. Did he not? He had yes. the nature. He had natural beauty and, and all the things. Yes. That, you know? Yes, he did. But he also had heaven. He also had yes. God. He also had the reality yes. of the spirit realm. The invisible as well as the visible. Yes. He had the beauty of what the natural man could see visibly, but he also had yes. the extreme beauty of what is not seen with the natural eye, but is just as real. Yes. Amen. 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 So he had the best. He had the natural. He had the spiritual. He had the humanity. He had the divinity. He had the visible. He had the invisible. Yes, he, he was a complete person. Yes. yes. The way God created us all to be. Yes. The way we got recreated when we got born again. Yes. Because we were one dimensional. Yes. Not really one dimensional, but I'm just using that in terms of this particular thing. Yes. Instead of having both dimensions available, we right. were one dimensional. All we are. As lost people are human beings. Right. Yes. Just people. Yes. Just flesh and blood. Born again, you're still a human, but in you is the kingdom of God. Yes. Now God and you have been reconnected. You are now supernatural. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. You are now heaven on earth. Yes, we are. You are now the connection between the divine and the human. Yes, we are. God created the visible realm as it was in the invisible realm. Remember no, or, or Moses. He said, make sure that when you build the ark, you build it after the plan in heaven. After the invisible reality, I want you to make a picture of that. Something tangible, something that can be seen by the natural man here on earth. It already existed. It existed in, in, in the invisible realm, right. in the heavenly realm, all along. It just wasn't visible for anybody. So he said, make sure you build it just like I tell you how to build it, because that's how the real one is. Right, right. So God created the visible realm. 
the way it was in the invisible. So that everything on earth would declare the reality of yes. God. Yes. Wow. Yes. Romans chapter 1 and verse 20. So people think, well, I'm going to die and go to heaven. No, you're not. You're going to die. You're going to heaven, but you're coming back here. To a new created earth. An earth that was just like it was for Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's right. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and godness, so that they are without excuse. Invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Praise the Lord. Adam was to earth, the visible, what God was to the heavens, the invisible. Yes. Yes. The devil, the serpent, challenged that reality, challenges that truth. That's what he's doing there. Uh -huh. Yes. That is called religion. Or in some circles, it's DIY. Do it yourself. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen? You can do this. Do it yourself. Uh, you know, work hard. Uh -huh. Perform. Uh -huh. Make yourself like God. Yeah. Yeah. Get really good. Be really good. Yeah. Yeah. You be like God. Adam's already like God. Yes. 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 Likeness and image is a visible reflection of an invisible being. Yes. Think about it. This is this is the the very core of what religion has done. It has imitated Satan and not God. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It has told us you DIY. You can do this like the law. They said, "Oh, we can do all that. We can keep all that." Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hardly got it out of their mouth, and they'd already broken two commandments. Uh -huh. mm. yeah. Praise the Lord. So God sets about to restore or renew dominion in order to release the kingdom of heaven back into the earth. <coughs> and he does it through a man. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. See, what we're doing is not trying to be some Holy Ghost spook or religious freak. Yeah. Exactly. We're just trying to be us. Yes. Yeah. If we only understood who us is. Ain't that the truth? Mm. See, I, we're not out there professing and, and declaring so you can say, well, praise the Lord. He's got some ministry going, doesn't he? Yeah. No. <laughs> He's just back to the He just got born again. Yeah. yeah. She just got born again. That's why she's doing it. That's absolutely yeah. natural yeah. for a person who is born again. Yes. Mm. Yes. But why? Because that's how the kingdom of God's government operates. Yes. You declare, and it has to come to pass. Amen. Amen. Heaven comes to earth. Not, not like it's off there somewhere. It's just an awareness is what it amounts to. When you know that the kingdom of heaven is in you, then you'll do the heavenly stuff. Sure. Instead of trying to make it come to you instead of trying to attract it by your really goodness or your super spirituality, you're just fighting a losing battle. You're just setting yourself up for all kinds of frustration and failure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Look, all right, Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. I'm going to show you something. I'm telling you, those of you that came out of the Pentecostal holiness movement, I'm going to read Isaiah 9 and 6 here in a minute. And it'll, that, that was a give it, you know. Spirit, that was a, a Jesus name scripture. I mean, it, it's a scripture for everybody, but I mean, we had kind of yeah. mm -hmm. taken it. That's not our own. But therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. You'll call his name Emmanuel God with us. You'll call him God is with us now. Mm -hmm. Alright. Isaiah 9 verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, the government will be on his shoulders, his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. 
if you get too hung up on the Trinity, this scripture won't do you any good. Mm. I'm not saying there isn't Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'm just saying the Shema, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And He is. Increase his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with the judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Look at verse 14 and 15. My dust, the child is born, son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulders. Not on his head which is Christ, but on his body. Huh. Yeah. On his shoulders. Yes. The government is on us, folks. Yes. And we keep pointing to Jesus is going to come and do something about this. And he's given us the government yes. and told us that we're supposed to uphold the government. Yes. 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 In other words, we are the government of God on this earth and yes. we're still functioning under a foreign government. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Yes. We have a way to live according to the kingdom of God. Beware. The kingdom of God is there. Yes. He's saying, get ready. Everything's changing. This isn't just a religious Woo! swap. We're not just changing one religion for another. This whole thing is going back to where it was originally. Yes. I'm going to yes. put you back in the position you were in before yes. man blew this thing, yes. before the devil came in and lied to him, and I'm going to put you back in a place yes. where you are one with God, walking Woo! in the Praise God. God was going to have a man in the earth who would restore dominion. Yes. And we are that body. Wow. And we're waiting on Jesus to come back and restore. And God is saying, hey, I've already given it to you. you you've got all the tools you need. Yes. You've got all the support system you have to have. You just have to do it now. Yes. You've got to believe who you are. Amen. See, you are kings and priests. Yes. yes. And what do they do? They declare. Yes, they do. Yes, they, they do. They say. They give edicts, laws. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Wow. Wow. Kings and priests. Yes, amen. In a kingdom government. The government of heaven. Yeah. See, we think, oh, one of these days, read Revelation, I'm going to make you rulers over men. You were, you, you were a little bit of nothing, but because you've been faithful over a little, I'm going to make you ruler over much. What were we faithful over? What was the little we were faithful over? We simply believed what he said. And now we are rulers over much, and we're waiting for eternity to rule and reign, and we're supposed to be ruling and reigning right now. Yes! Thank you. Yes! Thank you, Jesus. Just because our just because our time-space continuum isn't exactly uh, like it is in the uh, you know the, the reality of what God is saying doesn't mean it's not true. Uh -huh. Just because we've got one way of thinking about things doesn't mean that that's the only way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Because of that mindset, we're not operating in the power and the anointing yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We're not operating as who we are, the body of Christ, yes. individually and collectively. Yeah. Yes. Because we're waiting wow. till one day back to the garden. Yeah. Mm. Let me tell you, you're, you're, you've got the garden. Yes. In some sense, you are the garden. Yes. Wow. The kingdom of God is in you. Yes. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. That's why mm. a slave or, or, or a child is no better than a slave. We've all been, we sang the song, we've all been delivered from slavery. Mm -hmm. Fear. Yes. Anxiety. Yes. yes. Why? Because we've got all the answers, we're just not operating them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, we're waiting on Jesus to show up in the next service. Hopefully, that will be the service. If we can just get it all together just right and not screw up. I'll tell you what. See, we, we, we still play games. I'm, I'm just saying this, okay? 
My wife's sitting over here with flip flops and painted toenails. My God, that would have brought my roof down. Oh, yeah. In most of the churches that I was in. Well, hell, it's no wonder we're not having the move of God. We've got a hussy on the front pew with her toes sticking out, covering red paint. My God, is it one of the buildings that hasn't collapsed on all of us? Amen, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm just saying. We think, okay, we'll just pray through those painted toenails and get a move of God. Yeah. If we pray hard enough, we can stand against that horrible act yeah. of rebellion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And God hadn't just been scratching his head and saying, oh, oh God, yeah. please, Lord. I'm the Lord, but I'm just saying, <laughs> with the fullness of time, please get here. Yeah. These people are making me crazy, and I'm God. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, this is the human. This is the human condition. But you know, I just read a list of a hundred things to do before you die. And I was surprised that yell for help wasn't on the list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, oh. You know what I mean? Oh, what I'm saying, we're just, we get so one track minded <laughs> that we miss the very obvious reality of what it is God's doing. Mm. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I don't really want, but I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll admit I'm not perfect. Uh, but what in the world did the horse do that I rode in on? Yeah. I'm out of the same circle. Praise the Lord. John 3, 13. John 3, verse 13. I'm just saying, we, we have this, it's like an under, subliminal way of thinking, I guess, is maybe the way to say it, that tells us that it's just, we're just so close. we just right there. And I don't care if it's only that far away. If it's that far away, it's not here. Mm -hmm. So the devil doesn't really care if you don't believe that it's possible. He just doesn't want you to believe that it's a possibility now. Right. That it's a reality. This and it isn't something that somehow we're going to pray it down. Yeah. In fact, I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. But look at this. No man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. Even the Son of Man which is in heaven. <laughs> But this is where we're at, church. Mm. Come, Jesus. Come, Holy Ghost. Come this. Come that. Come make this happen. Make something change. Do something about it. Yes. Jesus didn't say He was going to heaven. <coughs> he said, right here on planet Earth, I'm standing in heaven. Wow. Mm. Wow. Get up. No man's ascended up to heaven except He that came down from heaven, neither Son of Man who's in heaven. Mm. See, Adam had become a gateway to hell. What? I mean, I'm just telling you. Because his fall released death, sickness, disease, poverty, all of that was released into the earth because of his fall. Adam was a gate. He was a door to hell. But the second Adam, the first born of the new creation, our elder brother. He renewed dominion. Filled with the Spirit of God. Sends back the Holy Ghost to us, right? Why? So we can be dispensers of the kingdom of heaven. To fill the earth with healing. With wholeness. With prosperity. With deliverance. In other words, to fill the earth with heaven's government. Mm. 
what I bind on earth is found in heaven. Mm -hmm. Why? Because where I am, they're one and the same. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, we, we, but we're still praying those things, thinking I'm going to bind it. That makes that's going to make move God, so that He'll stop everything else from happening except that one thing. No, this is my job. This is my responsibility. Yeah. So I'm not, uh, baby, you can't drive my car. This is my vehicle. Right. I have to drive this vehicle. I have to be the one that's in charge of how this vehicle functions. Mm -hmm. And we've done the Beatles thing and called the church baby, and baby, you can drive my car. You just tell us what to do and we'll do it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but I listen to music. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just saying See, we've let everybody else tell us who we are and what we are. Yeah. And just because they have a cross over the building or it's called the, you know, first church or the whatever, we've relinquished our authority. That's why Jesus said, you, you will need no man to teach you. Because you have it in you. Uh -huh. Now, I'm not against teaching. Obviously, that would be stupid. But... You see what I'm saying? God has put it in you so that you can know these things. That they will resonate with you when you hear you. Go, well, wait a minute. That makes, that somehow that makes sense. Right, right. Why? Because the Spirit connects yes. with spiritual truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Dispensers. Okay, so that's what we are. We're dispensers of God's government, of the heaven's government. What does that mean? We're dispensers of His resources. His influence. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Jesus became the gate to heaven or the gate yes. of heaven. Just like Adam was the gate of hell or the gate to hell. Angels, Jesus said, you'll see it. Angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Yes. Uh -huh. Amen. The house that God lived in on earth. Uh-huh. Remember Jacob? He's praying. He names the place Bethel, which means God's house. And the angels, he sees them coming and going, the stairway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. God was there. All right, John 1 51. He's going to tell us. You say, if I am very, very, I say unto you, hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Praise the Lord. If you're born again, mm -hmm. you've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. That's what the Scripture says. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. It's happening right here. Mm. Healing's right here. Yes, it is. Praise the Lord. Just because I can't see it doesn't mean it's not true. See, the Spirit gives you eyes to see the kingdom. And what do we do? We keep looking at the same old crap. Yeah. Still looking to the kingdom. Instead of hearing what the king is saying, mm -hmm. we're listening to the doctor's report. We're listening to some lawyer. Yeah. We're listening yeah. to the CNN. Yeah. Or we're listening to Fox News. Or we're listening yeah. to some other negative, horrible, bad stuff. I'm not saying. Yes. I'm not saying it isn't true. It's just not true for me. Because yes. <laughs> I'm not of this kingdom. That's right. I got another kingdom that I am for two. And in that kingdom, I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm healthy. Yes. I'm prospered. There yes. is no lack. There's no nothing Amen. except God. And his truth. Amen. That's the government Amen. that I live under. That I abide by. Yes. And that I'm supposed to be releasing to others. See, this isn't just about how we get to heaven. And that's what we've made. True. <laughs> this is about what's happening in heaven operating here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God spoke it all into existence. 
So now, it's all about redemption and restoration. And that's why we're here. He said, I have reconciled you so that you can be a reconciled. What does that mean? He's bringing stuff together, right? Mm -hmm. I have put you in heaven, or put heaven in you, so that you can bring other people to heaven. Yes. yes. Even while they're still in the earth. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, that's why in the mind of God, we're already with Him. Mm -hmm. And He's with us. Now He is, but I'm talking about eternal stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He doesn't see us as separate. That's what we do. Yeah. Because we're constantly focused on this external every time we do something negative, every time we think a bad thought or do a bad thing or whatever we think might be a sin, we push God off <coughs> into out there somewhere in the deep space. And let me tell you something. You don't have to travel light speed to be with God when you die. You'll just close your eyes in this thing and wake up right here where you're at. Open your eyes right where you're at, only you'll be in a completely different dimension. Yes. Wow. You'll be yes. in heaven. And you'll realize it was there all along. Right. If there's tears, right. that'll be the tears. I didn't realize how intimate yeah. we were with God yes. and yes. His reality. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I was so focused. This, yes. this, yes. Wow. that I couldn't see what was right yes. in front of me. Couldn't see the forest for the trees. Amen. Amen. Couldn't see God for the angels. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So He's through us. The plan was and is and shall remain for us to reconcile everything back to God since we have been reconciled. Yeah. Right. The fallen humanity begins in Eden with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and a snake and stolen identity. Praise the Lord. In Revelation, I, I, I taught on this last week, but in Revelation, it ends with only a tree of life mm -hmm. and no serpent. Mm -hmm. Tree of life and no snake. With our identities restored. restored. Yes. Mm -hmm. Remember I said when, when Israel was in bondage and they came out of bondage and they came back and were going to rebuild the temple and so on and so forth and they were trying to figure out, okay, who's going to be the priest? Because these people have been intermarrying and they've been locked, they've been out for 70 some years, 70 years or more. And it said the priest said, we can't, we can't use you because we can't trace your genealogy back. And he said, we're going to have to wait until a priest comes who has the urine and the thuman. Yes. Mm -hmm. What were they? They were stones of judgment mm -hmm. that were carried in the breastplate of the high priest. And what did they represent? The white stone represented innocence. Or, excuse me, the white stone represented revelation. The black stone, innocence and perfection. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, in the book of Revelation, it says Jesus gave this white stone to those that overcame. Overcame what? Their natural proclivity to be human instead of their divine reality of being godlike right. in the image of God. Right. And he gives them a stone, and then that stone is a white stone, and it's a revelation of their identity. Yeah. Yeah. Of who they really are. Yes. Because that's what he says. And he gives them a white stone. These have become overcomers. That's all of us as believers. He gives them a white stone and a new name. Wow. <laughs> yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Wow. So we end up with just nothing but a tree of life, eternal life, and restored identity. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. And see, God, that's going to happen for everybody, but God wants us to experience it now. But a lot of people, I'm sorry, have lived 
are living and will live who will never experience anything until they die. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking yeah. about anything yeah. supernatural in terms of the reality of the relationship with God. Because <clears throat> that's all they know. That's all they're thinking about. But I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. And that's exactly what religion has been doing for the last 2,000 years. Yeah. Complicating everything to the point where you need somebody to figure this thing out and then say, that, that must be true. Right. Mm. Not another gospel. This is not another gospel that I'm talking to you about. Mm -mm. Mm. What we have been dealing with is teaching something other than the simplicity of Christ. Mm -hmm. He's the answer to everything. And when you have Him, you have need of nothing else. Yes. Wow. He's even our faith. Yes, He is. It's just the simplicity of Jesus and the finished work mm -hmm. that he accomplished. Yes. Yeah. Everything else is imitation. Mm -hmm. It's deception. It's the leaven of the Pharisees. A mixture of some good news and some really bad stuff, too. So you never really get to enjoy the good news because you're so fearful of the bad news. Mm -hmm. But Jesus has given us a free gift. And because of the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, we can reign in life through one Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We become the masters of it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We rule it and reign in life. Yes. In one Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'll quit with this. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. See, if our if, if we don't get stretched back beyond what is just average, uh -huh. then we're then we're average. Sure. God has given us this divine nature. So much more. Yes. Amen. That by it we can be partakers of all of the fullness of God. Uh -huh. But let me tell you, God is interested in living a three bedroom, two bath ranch house. Or in a 12 bedroom mammoth estate. He's only interested in living in you. And you can't, if you're going to, if, if God's going to live in you, you're going to have to let him live in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He can't be like the crazy uncle that you keep locked up mm -hmm. in the attic. Mm -hmm. He's your heavenly father. He needs access. He needs to be able to have yes. control and, and not be hidden, but be released. Yes. God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins. He's quickened us together with Christ by grace. So you see, has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Have you ever tried to figure that out without going schizophrenic? Mm. He's not talking about my spirit is off somewhere. I already have Christ in me. Mm -hmm. Amen? I'm seated together with Christ right now in heavenly places. Right here. This is a heavenly place where I am because yeah. heaven has invaded earth through Jesus Christ who now reigns and rules and reigns in my life. Yes. Mm. Yes. Praise God. He's raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Raised us up. He raised us up from the dead. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. He has raised us up and let us sit together in heavenly places. We've been restored. Yes. Yes. Redeemed. To a heaven on earth. A kingdom of which there is no end. Exactly. Exactly. A kingdom where everything in heaven and earth come together in Christ. Yes. Yes. Woo! A little heavenly cow. He's a Lord. We have we have this unlimited potential. Yes. It's called God. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And wherever 
the kingdom is God reigns, God rules, and where God rules, there's no sickness, there's no disease, there's no death, there's no dying, there's there's all that God has. I tell you, I believe this. If I could ever get to where I really, really comprehend this and begin to live it, yes, I'm not going to die. No, no. say that. And maybe. That's when Jesus comes and takes us out of here. Those that are alive and remain, He manifests somehow. Woo, hallelujah, praise God. Yes, some are going to die. They're going to die because they didn't know. Just like some are suffering with diseases and suffering with poverty because they didn't know what they had, who they were, what had happened when they were redeemed. Thank you, Lord. I mean, God. Listen, God's not stupid, so He's trying to stretch our thinking. Amen. Our, look, look, our spirits can believe stuff that our minds have no way of comprehending or yes. being able to discern or, or make sense of. Sure. By the Spirit, we are genius. By the Spirit, we have the mind of Christ. Yes. 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 Has raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Yeah. See, we're waiting. Yeah. We're waiting and waiting yeah. and waiting. Yeah. One of these days, you know, there'll be Volkswagens, you know, or, or, or bugs the size of Volkswagens flying down out of the sky. Oh, the Lord is on his way because everything's going to hell. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe we'll just say, I'll have none of that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I don't want it. I refuse it. I reject it. I bind it. Um, yes. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Mm. How about we just start believing? I'm going to live forever and you're never going to die. Yeah. Mm. Yes. What do you got to lose? Amen. Yeah. How about we be the ones that are alive and Amen. remain and caught up yes. in the air? Mm. Yes. I, I want some agreement here because yeah. I don't want to buy that other insurance policy. Yes. yes. Wow. Oh. <laughs> I got a free one from the Lord. Yes. 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 And there's no expiration date. Amen. And the premiums have all been paid. Amen. Wow. Yes. Yes. Why don't we just get crazy about Jesus? Absolutely. Yes. Why don't we just let our minds go yeah. to the Spirit and believe that nothing shall be impossible? Amen. Amen. How about we actually do this instead of just talking about it and exactly. preaching it once a week and, and exactly. testifying to somebody else about it? How about we just start living? Yep. Yes. Hmm. Amen. I guarantee you the Amen. devil will not be a problem. Mm -hmm. Amen. Or he'll come around and once in a while to see if you've sure. given in. Sure. Yes. Yes. But all you've got to do is just stand up and do what Jesus did. I'm not living by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth yes. of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Praise the Lord, I'm going to live forever. And you're never dying. That's right. Hallelujah. Get used to this space. Yes. Hallelujah. It may get older, but it ain't going away. Yeah. Yes, God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Why not? Exactly. Why not? Exactly. We can't. We, we, we have a problem believing the very little things. Yes. The little, yes. Small stuff. Yeah. And God's trying to stretch us. To where our mind is the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. To where yes. nothing is impossible. That's exactly right. You might as well. I mean, everybody that knows you thinks you're nuts already, probably. Yes. They're not believers. <laughs> they already think you're about half crazy. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be half anything. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be all crazy. Yes. Amen. I'm, I'm going to be all about Jesus and just completely nuts and completely healthy. Yes. 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 Amen. How many of you? Can, can you just try this on for size? Sure. Amen. Can you just sure. think that maybe it's more or something other than what we have been yes. stuck with? Yes. yes. Amen. And just see what God will do. Yeah. When we really repent. Right. Why not? Yeah. 
so that the kingdom can come. Yeah. We need to change our mind, not just about God, but about us. Because yeah. we've got a false image of God, we've got a false image of us. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I believe you. Uh-huh. Almost there. West Virginia. Oh, Joe, you didn't know how close you were to it. Yeah. You didn't realize how close you were, praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Did you feel that? No. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Felt like heaven. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's who we are. That's what we are. Amen. Now, you wouldn't have half of the temptations and issues that most of us struggle with uh -huh. if we could keep our head yeah. where our spirit Absolutely. is. Absolutely. We can think the way we really sure. are. Mm -hmm. Amen. Fear would not be an issue. No. What do we got to fear? Exactly. exactly. If God is for us, <laughs> amen. Give him a hand clap this morning. <laughs> And go therefore in the power of his might. Hallelujah. And be who you are in Jesus. Take a kingdom from somebody today. Amen. God bless you. I appreciate everybody. Have a great week. See uh, those of you who can be here Wednesday and otherwise we'll see you back here next Sunday. God bless. Have a great supernatural week. That's who you are. In Jesus name.